If you're after a statement plant, but one that's really easy to look after, then the Pachira aquatica is the perfect plant. So I'm gonna run through the origins of the plant, the complete care guide to help them thrive, as well as how you can propagate them and multiply them for free. So the Pachira aquatica goes by many names. I know it as the Mexican fortune tree, but it is also one of several plants that go by the name of money tree, and there are others which we'll come back to shortly. So these are native to Central and South America, and they usually grow in wetland or swampland, but despite that, they don't actually need as much water as you would think they do, so we'll touch on that again when we talk about the care needs. And these can grow incredibly tall, so they can grow to about 20 meters tall, they also produce edible nuts, which was where they get some of their other names from. So I mentioned a few earlier, but they're also known as the Guinea nut, Guyana chestnut, Malabar chestnut, and French peanut. And I'm sure they have other sort of nut related names. Now as a house plant, it's very unlikely they will ever produce flowers or nuts, and they definitely won't get to 20 meters tall. So we can obviously keep those within a certain limit so they can grow within our room. They can get very large. And as I mentioned, they can grow very fast in the right conditions. So now let's touch on the plant care to help them thrive. So for a plant with such a decorative appeal as these, they are incredibly easy to look after and they are perfect for beginners or people with lots of house plants already. Now these could be worked into a wider collection or work just as well as a statement plant on its own. So we'll start with watering and as I said, despite their wetland or swampland natural habitat, they don't actually need as much water as you think they do. So they can actually store water in their trunks and in the stems. So when it comes to watering, generally you want to keep some moisture in the soil so you can let the top of the soil dry out between watering and then give it a top up. What you want to avoid doing is over watering or letting them sit in wet soil as that can actually lead to root or rotting of these trunks or stems. But equally, we don't want to forget to water because that can also lead to leaf drop. However, they are quite forgiving. So if you are a beginner or maybe you do occasionally forget to water, as I said, these are very easy plants to look after, so they will be quite forgiving because they can store some of that water. If you forget to water for too long, you might notice the leaves dropping. However, they are very fast growers in the right conditions when they are watered, so they can quickly replenish any leaves that might be lost as a result. So as I said, very easy care. Just maintain some moisture in the soil and then you'll have a happy Pachira aquatica. Now watering always leads nicely onto soil and when it comes to the potting mix, what we want to focus on here is drainage. As I said, we don't want the trunks or roots to risk going rotten if they're sitting in wet soil. So drainage is key here, but we do also want some moisture retaining properties. So we might start with a compost or soil, mix in a higher proportion of perlite or grit to give it that good drainage, but then use something like a smaller proportion of vermiculite or coconut core to hold on to some of that moisture. Now when it comes to lighting, these are quite standard and they just prefer a spot with bright indirect light. So avoid direct light as that can burn the leaves like it can with many foliage plants, but also they can be okay in lower light settings, they just might grow a little bit slower. One thing that you will find is in their optimal conditions, they can grow very fast and they will need turning to keep an even plant. So you'll notice with this one, this one is one that I bought recently, I'm guessing the light was here in the shop as all of the leaves have grown to face this way. So I'm gonna put it this way with the light here to try and even it out a little bit. So when it comes to temperature, again, these are really standard. So the temperatures in our homes should be fine for these. So anywhere between maybe 14 degrees Celsius to about mid twenties, give or take a couple of degrees. Avoid them going below 10 degrees Celsius as that will be too cold for them and cause them stress, possibly even kill them. But I'm hoping that our homes wouldn't be below 10 degrees Celsius unless they're in a particular spot that's cold. So just make sure that you're mindful of where you put them so that they are within that sort of temperature range. They do like a spot that is slightly warmer. So if you do have a warmer space in the home, then they would benefit from that possibly more than a colder temperature, but so long as it's somewhere within that temperature range. Then when it comes to humidity, these can require a little bit more attention compared to other house plants, but it really depends on the humidity levels in your home. So they can be okay with the humidity levels that we have naturally in our homes, of course, providing we don't have a very dry home. So if you've got the radiators on all the time, if you've got aircon on all the time, or you've got a very drafty home, for example, then it might not be suitable and you might need to give these some assistance, but generally they should be okay. You can put them in rooms that have naturally high humidity, like bathrooms or kitchens, for example. And what you can do is maybe put it in the spot that you intend for it to go and then keep an eye on it and see how it's doing. When it's not getting enough humidity, what you might notice is it will start to drop leaves. Now that can be a natural part of the plant's life cycle. They will drop leaves occasionally, but if that goes beyond the level of what you deem is normal, 
then you might need to give it some assistance. So you could put it amongst other plants to increase the localised humidity or possibly invest in a humidity to give the plant what it needs. But this is really specific and depending on what the humidity levels are in your home and where you actually decide to put it. So of course, as with all house plants, avoid putting it right near to any of those things that I mentioned earlier, dry heat sources like radiators or aircon units or doors where they might be drafts that will affect the humidity levels and obviously make this plant unhappy. Now I've brought the larger plant back for this one. As you can see, it's a foliage heavy plant and these grow quite quickly in the right conditions. So they do benefit from using a fertilizer throughout the growing season. So you can use an all purpose fertilizer once a month and then do that only through the growing season. Obviously stop during the colder months as you should with most other house plants. And I generally like to use a water soluble one so I can mix it into the watering schedule once a month and that gives the plant what it needs. So obviously follow the instructions on whatever type of fertilizer that you decide to use. So those are the standard care tips for the Pachira aquatica, but there are some specific ones for this plant that would be beneficial to know also. So the first one is pruning. Now when it comes to pruning, you might prune these plants for a number of reasons and it can benefit the plant as well as the aesthetic depending on what look that you're going for. So with these, they can grow quite quickly, as I said, in the right conditions. Sometimes you will notice stems just going off in their own direction or going above the sort of main canopy of the plant, depending on what shape that you want. Then you can just trim those off as and when needed. Use clean scissors or, or a knife or whatever you decide to use. Just make sure that it's clean. And then whatever you do cut off, keep that safe because these are really good propagators. So you can use that and I'll touch on propagation in just a moment. So that's one reason you might prune them. When it comes to early spring, before they start actively growing again, you can give them a larger prune. So maybe if you wanted to bring the size down or maybe bring it all back into a certain shape, if you're after maybe a rounded tree, for example, which you often see these in that sort of shape, then you can do more pruning at that time. And then when it starts in the active growing season again, it will come back with lots of new shoots in the shape that you've cut it. And then you'll only need to give it the occasional prune as and when things start to go astray. Or of course, if you like that natural and jungle look, then you might decide to let it grow wherever it wants to go. So one other way that you might use pruning is to also shape the plant and get it to the size that you want it to be. So if you want a taller plant, or maybe you want to continue the plait on the stem, then you can prompt vertical growth by taking off side leaves and shoots to make the stems grow taller. Now with these, you might find that they've been cut at the top of the trunk, so they're actually growing from a side stem as it is. So if you do decide to then plait that afterwards, there will still be a little bit of a blip there, but the longer they get, the more you'll be able to continue to plait it as it grows up. Once you reach the intended height that you want it to be, or maybe even if you want it just to be a smaller but fuller plant, you can instead cut the tops of the stems off and that will prompt vertical growth. So you get a bushier and fuller plant. So it really depends on what sort of shape and size of Pachira that you want. And then you can obviously use your pruning to prompt the plant in that shape or size that you're after. So then when it comes to potting up, you may need to do this every two to three years. And as with any plant that you're potting up, you only want to go for a new pot that's a little bit bigger, maybe an inch or two larger than the pot that it's in to give it a little bit of extra room to grow in. However, when you pot up to a larger pot, that of course means the plant will get bigger. So you can use the pot size to actually help you maintain the size of the plant. So if you want to keep a smaller plant, you can keep it in a smaller pot. It can be okay if it's a little bit root bound and all you need to do just to maintain its nutrients, for example, is give it that fertilizer during the active growing season and occasionally, maybe once a year, top up the soil level in the pot so that it's getting some fresh soil, but maybe not a full pot up. So just bear that in mind. If you do decide to go for a bigger pot every couple of years, the plant will also get bigger and bigger to correspond with the pot that it's in. But I think that's a wonderful thing. So if that's what you're going for, I think the bigger the plant that you can get, the better. One really interesting example of this, and I didn't know this was possible until I did the research for this video, just for some extra tips, you can actually get these as bonsai trees. So this is a perfect example of how both using the size of the pot and pruning them effectively can maintain the size and shape of the plant. Now this next one is really useful to know for Pachira aquatica plants as I was quite worried when I first encountered it with my larger plant and thought it was a pest infestation. So Pachira plants will use a process called gettation where they expel some of the sap from the leaves and it creates sticky leaves. But of course that can also be a sign of pest infestation. So this will hopefully help you 
be able to distinguish between the two should it happen with your Pachira aquatica plants. So gutation can happen maybe if there's excess water or I've noticed it in warmer conditions when it is the summer and we've had heat waves, that's when my plant tends to use this process. And you will notice that it starts to expel sap from the leaves and you get very distinctive droplets on the ridges or the veins on the back of the leaf or on the tips of the leaf. And if you happen to touch it, it's incredibly sticky. It's almost similar to touching syrup or jam or something like that. And it's that sort of stick that you can't quite get off unless you wash your hands. So that's what gutation is. Whereas obviously if it's a pest infestation, they can cause damage to the leaves, which can then leave the sap on the leaves. But also some pests like aphids will leave a residue behind, which is sticky, so honeydew. And if you've got a pest infestation rather than gutation, you will obviously see different signs for that. So you can look out for the actual pests themselves running about on the plant, or you might notice there are groups of stickiness or patches of stickiness, as opposed to down the veins or the ridges, or even patches of damage or bite marks where they've damaged the plant, trying to get the sap and then obviously leaving it behind on the leaf, leaving it with sticky leaves. So obviously then you need to tackle the pests and do whatever you need to do for that. But if it is gutation, that is just a natural process and it is harmless to the plant. So you don't need to worry about that if that is happening. So there are a number of ways to propagate them. If you wanted to, you can start them from scratch from seed. If you found a legit seller of the seeds, you can then germinate them and grow them yourself. Of course, that will take a lot longer to get them to these full size plants than it would if you were using another propagation method. Perhaps the quickest and easiest way to get an established plant through propagation is using stem propagation. So this is quite standard as we might use for other house plants. However, one of the great things with the Pachira plant in particular is that they don't need a leaf node to be able to propagate the stem. So of course, if you have any on the stem, that will increase your chances as that is the likely place that any roots will develop. But they can actually produce the roots at the bottom of the stem where it's cut, as well as up the length of the stem, depending on where they are in water or the soil. So this can really increase your chances of success with propagating the Pachira aquatica. And I have also seen leaf propagation as well. So the leaves have been rooted in water. Now I couldn't find any definitive evidence of these producing plants from those rooted leaves. Naturally, one would assume that would happen in time as they continue to grow or whether it would just die off. I'm not 100% sure, but they can be rooted too. So maybe you could try that as an experiment or maybe I will try that myself as an experiment too, just to get some answers as to whether or not that is possible. But again, that would take a lot longer to get an established looking plant once it does start to grow or if it does start to grow. So the method that we'll be using is stem propagation and I will show you how we do that with water or soil. So it is a little bit easier to do in water with this particular propagation for the Pachira aquatica, but you can do them in soil again, just like with many other houseplant propagations. So as with any propagation, there are a few things that you'll need depending on the method that you're using. With all propagations, you need a healthy plant and a healthy piece of the plant to then try and propagate. It's always good practice to water the plant at least 30 minutes before taking the cutting. So you know that that piece that you remove has the water that it needs before it's able to then develop roots and take up its own source of water. If you are using the water method, you ideally want a clear container so that you can see the roots being developed as well as some clean water, which you will then change regularly during the propagation. If you're using the soil method, you will want a clean pot with fresh soil in. And as you can see, I've got lots of perlite in there to aid with that drainage we mentioned with the soil requirements. And then you also want, if I can get them, a clean cutting utensil, so scissors, secateurs, or a knife, just to make sure you can take the cutting and make sure there's no nastiness or disease or anything that will cause rot to the cutting while we're waiting for it to propagate. Now, one extra thing that you might need with the soil method is a clear plastic bag or a propagation box just to help maintain the humidity and temperature, but that's only for this method. If you're using the water method, which I think is the easiest in this instance, then you just need your container of water. Now, I'm generally quite happy with the size and shape of this plant, so I wouldn't usually take a cutting and try to propagate it. However, I would still like to do so to demonstrate it in this video. And when I put this at a different angle, you can see on the video as well, there is a stem that has grown above the rest of the tree just here. And this has identified itself as being a candidate for that propagation. So I'm going to bring this a little bit closer so you can see the stem in more detail. So I'm going to step out of shot so that it actually focuses on the stem and not me. So you'll see here we've got 
the really healthy piece of stem and there are some leaves on there too which we'll remove. So as I did say earlier, we don't necessarily need the leaf nodes anyway because it can produce roots down the stem and at the cut end. However, that will just give us some extra chances of roots, so an extra likelihood of success with the propagation. So I'm gonna cut the stem just here, just below this leaf, and then when I take that off, I'll take these leaves off too, and that'll give us a really good bit of stem. So here is that bit of stem that I've just cut off, and all I'm gonna do with this is remove these two lower leaves that I mentioned, and we've still got that really strong piece of stem just there with the big leaf, I think I'll leave that big leaf on top, and then those two little leaves that are growing to the side. So I'm just gonna pop those leaves down out the way and then I can pop that into the water. And what I might actually need to do, I think, is take some of this water out. So I've just removed some of that water so that the water doesn't cover the stem completely and only covers the lower level of the stem with the leaf nodes. So I'm gonna pop that in there and tuck that little leaf in there too so that it stays secure. And then that's as easy as it is. I'll just leave it in there, change the water regularly, maybe once a week, just to keep it fresh and then keep an eye on it. So what I'm looking for ideally is the little, obviously growth of roots from either the nodes or anywhere on the stem or little white growths that will then develop into roots. Now, I'll keep an eye on this if there's any discoloration where it could maybe go rotten or maybe turn and then I can cut any of that off and keep trying unless it obviously affects the whole of the propagation. And I'll keep an eye on these little leaves and the big leaf. So long as these look healthy, regardless of how long it takes, I will leave it in the water and continue changing the water and just be patient as it can take time for roots to develop. Then once there are roots and once they are about one to two centimeters long, I will then transfer it to a pot with the soil mixture that we mentioned earlier. So then if you are using the soil method instead, you'll need your clean pot of fresh soil and I've got this mixed with the perlite and so on, as I mentioned earlier, to make sure it's right for the plant. And then I've just taken this out of the water just for illustration purposes, make a hole in the soil with a pen, which I've used, or chopstick or some other instrument and then put your stem in the soil and then what you want to do is just make sure that the stem is covered with the leaf nodes and firm the soil around the stem just firm enough so that it holds the plant in place but not too firm that it obviously restricts any potential roots from growing and then give that a water and keep that moist so that that will then hopefully be a successful propagation now one thing that you might need to do with the soil propagation is use a clear plastic bag or a propagation box just to make sure that you're maintaining the humidity and the temperature. So if I was doing with that with this one, I might need to remove this rather larger leaf so that it fits in a bag or a propagation box. But I will probably put this back in water because I prefer the water method, particularly for the Pachira aquatica propagation. Then all you need to do, just like with the water one, is keep an eye on the health of the plant. If this stays green and healthy, then leave it where it is, be patient and wait for roots. If you see new growth, that's a great sign that it's potentially developing roots and starting to take up its own water and nutrients and you'll have a successful propagation regardless of the propagation method that you use, soil or water. As this plant is believed to bring prosperity and good fortune, it's the perfect time to drop this video at the start of the year. So I'd like to wish everyone watching a happy new year and all the best for 2024. If you have found this video useful in learning more about the Pachira aquatica plant, how to care for it and propagate it, to multiply your plants for free, then consider subscribing as I'll have new videos every week, usually on houseplant topics. My last video was all about the possible plant trends and style trends that we'll see in 2024. So if you'd like to watch that next, I'll link it at the end for you. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below and I'll respond to everyone. And as always, thank you for watching Grow Your Wellbeing.